Welcome to the message of the Bible GPS Institute. Today we're going to focus on Philippians chapter 3. We continue our series on the wonderful book of Philippians. But before we do that, I just want to thank you for your ongoing support, your prayers, and for your continued support when it comes to the donations. I'm so thankful for everyone donating to our ministry. We need all the donations. We want to thrive. We want to increase our impact in the world. So thank you so much for your ongoing support. Before we're going to read Philippians chapter 3, let us just bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, we want to thank you for this amazing day. Thank you, Lord, that we can focus on your sovereignty, on the fact that you are the Lord of heaven and earth. But we also focus on the fact that you are with us, that you're not aloof, but you surround us with your amazing love and compassion. Thank you, God, that you have also given us your word, the ancient text that we call the Bible, because we know that the unknown future can only be navigated through the compass of an ancient text. And we know that the Bible is current, it is clear, and it is trustworthy. Thank you, God, that we can also pray that this word can take deep root in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we're going to read a few verses from chapter 3, and the main focus will be verse 8. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh. For it is we who are in the circumcision, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus, and to put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reason for such confidence. If anyone else thinks he has a reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard of the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for the legalistic righteousness, faultless. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss. I consider everything loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. Now I think you will agree with me that we live in a time where most things are given a monetary value. You have a house and it is worth something. You have a car and it is worth something. We look at the contracts of sports people and it has a monetary value as well. So most things in this world, we give a monetary value. And even when we look at people, we say that that person has a self-worth, especially famous people. And last week, the world has said goodbye to a very famous person. His name is Charlie Watts. He was the drummer of the Rolling Stones, and he died at the age of 80. And he had a self-worth or a net worth of $250 million. And that's a lot of money. I cannot even fathom so much money. And many people would desire to have so much money because you can do a lot with so much money. That was his net worth, $250 million. And it's interesting that he was the drummer when that one song of them became so famous, I Ain't Get No Satisfaction. That song is probably according to the people who know rock music very well, probably one of the top 10 rock songs of all time, Satisfaction. But the full title is I Ain't Get No Satisfaction. And when you read the lyrics, it is where the person on the radio said, if you want to have more, 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 and then the refrain of the song 
just continues by saying, I ain't get no satisfaction by getting more and more and more. And I remember one wealthy guy was asked one day, when is enough enough for you? Then he just said, just a little bit more. Because most people are not satisfied with where they are in life and what they have in life. People just always want more. And the people in the advertise business, they know it very well. So they target people and they will tell you, you need more. Because if you have more, you will be satisfied. But I think the title of the Rolling Stones, that well-known rock song, resonates with most people. Because it is true, I ain't get no satisfaction. But it's interesting when you read Paul. Paul had a lot of things that he could value. He says in this chapter that he was, he was uh, an, in terms of legalism, a Pharisee. He came from a very good tribe, Benjamin. He was well educated. He had everything that people wanted in those days. Paul had it. And then Paul said, I look at that and I count it worthless. And why would Paul do that? Because Paul had discovered something that surpasses all value in this world. It is the ultimate value. And when you grasp what is the ultimate value, that will give you joy. Because value and joy, they go together. People will spend a lot of money to buy something they value because it gives them joy. People will pay a lot of money to go to a sports event because it gives them joy. So value and joy go together. But Paul says, you know, I have discovered the ultimate value. It surpasses all value things that you see in this world. And that is the reason why Paul had so much joy. Well, when we look at the gospel, now every Sunday you hear the gospel in sermons. And the gospel has many different angles. And when you read Paul, Paul gives us many angles on joy as well. In one of the previous messages on Philippians, I said the reason why Paul was so joyful, because he had good perspective. He looked at his chains in prison, then he realized, but I'm not chained. You cannot chain the good news. And it had started a chain reaction. The gospel spread it. Because Paul realized, you cannot always change your circumstances, but you can change the way you perceive your circumstances. That you can change. You have control over how you see things. And then interesting, as I've said in the previous message, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. So Paul didn't look at his situation and thought, oh, I'm in prison. No, no, no. His perspective was that he was in Christ. That's a phrase that Paul uses over and over again. I am in Christ. And that is why Paul was so joyful because he says in verse 8 that I have discovered the ultimate value in life. And there he says in chapter 3, verse 8, the following, he says, What is more, I consider everything a loss compared, and this is the key, to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. The surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. He's looking to all his credentials. He's from the tribe of Benjamin. He's an intellectual. He's a Roman citizen. But then you realize, comparing to knowing the greatness of our Lord Jesus Christ, to know him in person, that surpasses all everything in this world. That is the ultimate worth. Now, I just want to ask the question and I was thinking but what gives that the ultimate value why is it the ultimate value to say to know Jesus Christ as my Lord that is the ultimate value that surpasses everything else all the other values in this world and that will give you satisfaction why is it why Paul could say that Jesus Christ is the ultimate value value and it will surpasses everything else in this world and it will give you satisfaction in prison he could say 
I have joy. He didn't say, I want a little bit more. He said, I experience joy. 16 times in four chapters. I just want to give us three reasons. There are many more. But the first reason, when you read all the letters of Paul, there is one thing that stood out for Paul in his life. And when he, th when he thought about God, it was grace. The word grace. Paul said, I'm saved by grace, not by works. In Ephesians 2, he says it very well. He said in Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9, he says, I'm saved by the grace of God, not by works. And then he gives a reason so that no one can boast. So Paul says, you know, I can boast nothing. I'm saved by God's grace. That is the ultimate thing for Paul to realize. I'm saved by the grace of God. And that actually reminds me of a story I read about a street preacher in Britain. And one day someone approached this street preacher and said, he said, sir, in Britain where we live, we have hundreds of religions. How do we know which religion is the truth? And then the preacher said, but you know, did you say we have hundreds of religions? But according to me, the preacher said, we only have two religions in the world. And then the man who had approached the preacher asked him, but what are those two religions? I thought there were hundreds of religions. He said, no, there are only two. The first religion is, it is what you can do for God. The second religion in the world is what God has done for you. Then he said, all the other religions of the world, they are just variations of the first religion, and that is what you can do for God. Christianity is the only religion what God has done for you in Jesus Christ. And that is the ultimate value for Paul to know. I'm saved by the grace of God. Paul says, when it comes to zeal, I was a Pharisee. I was legalistic. I, I lived a good life. I wanted to save myself. And then Paul realized, if you think you can save yourself, you can boast. Then you think you're better than other people. But then he said, we are saved only by God's grace. We come to God as beggars. It is only by the grace of God. So that is why it is the ultimate value. We all need to be saved from the transgressions from this world. And Jesus said, I have come to you to show you who my father is. And I have died for you on the cross to show you how much I love you. And I have reconciled you with God. You have contributed nothing. Because if you can contribute anything to your salvation, you can boast. And then it's not grace. We are saved by grace alone. Second reason, and you get it all over the letters of Paul and in all the other books of the New Testament. And that is the phrase, in Christ. You get it multiple times. Paul says in this book, I am in Christ. So Paul didn't think of himself that he's in prison or in Rome. He realized, I am actually in Christ. This is where my heart is. This is where I belong. And Paul realized, I'm a believer, but I'm also a belonger. I have a home. I belong to Jesus Christ. He's my savior. I belong. And that is why when we baptize people, we baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Because when we baptize someone in the name of God, we say through that, this is where you belong. It is like when you buy a house. The house is now in your name. And when we baptize someone, that person is now in God's name. That person belongs to God. And that is the ultimate value to know that you belong. You belong to God just because of the love of Jesus Christ. And no one can separate you from that. That is the ultimate value. So for Paul, it was all about Christ because he says in verse 8 of Philippians 3, the, the greatness of knowing Jesus Christ as my Lord, that surpasses all other values in this world. It's the ultimate value, the greatness of knowing that Jesus Christ is your Lord. And the word Lord means God. So to know Jesus is to know God. Just imagine 
when you say Jesus is my Lord and Savior, you have a relationship with the creator of this universe. He's not far away. He is with you. And you can, can pray to him and you can say, our father. And that is just amazing. And that's the ultimate value for Paul. And it needs to be the ultimate value for us. And that needs to give us satisfaction. So number one, we are saved by God's grace. I can just relax. I don't need to earn it because I will never achieve it. All the other religions in the world is what you can do for God. Christianity is what God has done for you in Jesus Christ. So number two, it is that we belong. We are in Christ. So for Paul, it was all about Jesus Christ because Jesus is God in flesh. I had a supper the other day with a colleague of mine in a different city. And I told him that one of our previous members of the church, after he had left, told me that I am too much about Christ. And immediately this minister responded. He said, my friend, you need to take that as a compliment. And I have never thought about it in that way, to take it as a compliment. So yeah, we need to be all about Christ and you can never be enough about Jesus Christ because he's God. And that's the ultimate value is to know God and to know that he knows you. So the first reason we are saved by God's grace, not by works. The second reason I am in Christ, I belong. That's why I'm all about Christ. Third reason. When you see everything in this life that we give value to, your car, your house, anything, then there is one sentence that will ring true for everything in this world. It will ring true for everything. And that one sentence is, this too shall pass. But there's one thing, and that is the ultimate value that you cannot say, this too shall pass. The love of Jesus Christ cannot pass. Because the day that you pass on, when you die, Christ's love will still be there. Nothing can separate you from that. That is why Paul says in the book of Philippians, to live for me is Christ and to die is gain. So why is that to die gain? Because he knows nothing can separate me from Jesus Christ. That's the ultimate value. And that surpasses everything else because everything in this world, you can say, this too shall pass. Even your life, this too shall pass. I saw a quote the other day and it really made me think. The quote said something along these lines. It said, you can live your life and every day without Christ, but you cannot live the day when you die without Christ. You can live without Christ, but if you die without Christ, the Bible makes it very clear, then you lost. And I don't really know how that will look like. But that's the truth. You can live without Christ. But if you die without Christ, you are lost. And we never know when that day will happen. So don't postpone. Embrace the ultimate value. And what is the ultimate value? Not to do things for God. No, just to be open to the grace of God and to say, Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. I promise you that is the ultimate truth. Because there will come days in your life that the things you value, at that certain day you will realize it doesn't mean a lot. Like when you end up in the hospital, you get bad news from the doctor, then you realize the car that you have in your garage, the cottage you have, it means nothing when it comes to your health. But in the end, the ultimate value is to say, I belong to my only Savior, Jesus Christ, who is Lord. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, that we can have satisfaction by embracing the ultimate value, and that is to know you. And you have made yourself known to us as a God that is compassionate, loving, and caring. You have given us so much wisdom through your teachings. 
You have given us your Holy Spirit. You have given us a church family. You have given us everything to experience joy in this world, in the midst of our circumstances. Lord, we can have the newest smartphone. We can drive the newest model. We can have the most beautiful cottage. But in the end, that too shall pass. But there's one thing that can never pass, and that is to know you, your amazing love. And that gives us joy. When you discover the ultimate value, then you will have joy that surpasses all your understanding. Thank you, Lord, that we can experience that your word is current, clear, and relevant, and it has authority. I pray, Lord, that you will guide us in this life to embrace this ultimate truth. Amen. So wherever you go, God is sending you. God is sending you to people that are looking for the ultimate value. People are looking for joy. And we know that COVID has robbed us in many ways from our joy, has robbed us from going to our favorite restaurant or to the sport events, things that we value because value and joy, they go hand in hand. So COVID has robbed us from many things, but just be there for people and that they can see in you in the midst of all the circumstances that deep down in your heart, there is the ultimate value, knowing Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the amazing love of our Father and the fellowship of His Spirit be with you wherever you go. God bless you.